It's early September and Mr. Whiskers is back. Every fall, the Arizona Game and Fish Department stocks over 242,000 pounds of catfish into community lakes across Arizona. In fact, most of these community fishing program lakes are stocked over 20 times a year with catfish, trout, and sunfish. The fish stocking season starts in September with catfish. From November through March, catchable-sized trout are stocked. And in mid-March, catfish and sunfish make their way into the lakes, with catfish continuing to be stocked through June. If you live in an urban area, most likely you have a lake or pond in your neighborhood stocked by the Arizona Game and Fish Department. As of 2016, there were over 37 different waters to fish at in many communities across the state. There are four community lakes and ponds in the Yuma area, four more in the Tucson area, 25 across the metropolitan Phoenix area, a couple in Maricopa, more in Casa Grande, Payson, Prescott, Prescott Valley, Flagstaff, St. John's, and all across Arizona. Spending some time fishing out on the lake is just a great way to spend the day. You can get outside, relax, and have some fun. You can go alone for some quiet time or bring the kids along for a family adventure. Marcy Alderman, the sports fishing education coordinator at the Arizona Game and Fish Department, has some tips on what you need to get started. Number one and probably most important before you place that pole or that line in the water is to make sure that you have a fishing license. Um, in your regulations, it'll tell you, depending on where you're planning to fish, if you're focusing on your community fishing waters or if you want to venture out to some of our state waters and our rivers and streams, um, it'll have the breakdown of the different types of licenses that you can buy and those prices and what is covered under those licenses. So your essentials for your tackle box would be hooks, swivels, sinkers or weight of some sort, uh, bobbers, and some extra fishing line. In addition, you would want needle nose pliers or a pair of hemostats and a pair of nail clippers to help you cut the line. And those are your basic essentials. Uh, you could also put a stringer in a tackle box if you choose to use that over a fish basket. Bait, do a little bit of research beforehand, know what type of fish you're, you're planning on focusing on. Uh, worms is the universal bait, so I always have worms no matter what I do. Uh, in addition to that, if you're focusing on catfish, you have stink bait, hot dogs, bacon, um, all of those work well for catfish. If you're focusing more on trout, that would be your worms, salmon eggs, mealworms, in addition to regular night crawlers, power bait, and marshmallows work. Sunfish are fun because they will bite on just about anything. Another additional bait that you can use both for sunfish, trout, and even carp is corn. That's another common or popular bait. In front of us, I have two different fishing reels. Here in my right hand is what we call a spin cast reel or com more commonly known as a closed faced reel. Here in my left hand is what we call a spinning reel or more commonly known as an open faced reel. When deciding which, between which two of these reels to purchase for your child, uh, there's a lot of questions that come up, which one is better, which one's easier to use, and more commonly, the spin cast reel is easier to use for kids. The simple push button mechanism here is very easy to understand, very easy to handle, and very easy to use versus the spinning reel. Typically for youth, if it's their first time fishing and they've never fished before, the spin cast reel is the way to go. And then as they become more experienced, they graduate up to the spinning reel. All right, so when baiting a hook, the objective is just to cover as much of the hook as possible so the fish can't see it. Ready to cast. All right, just before you cast, always make sure you leave a little bit of space between either your bobber or your weight and the tip of your pole so it doesn't have a tendency to catch or get stuck when you cast. Gripping the fishing pole like this, 
you're going to place your thumb over the button and push and hold down tight. Look behind you for safety that you don't catch anybody. You're going to do an overhand cast like you're throwing a ball overhand. As your hand passes your face, release the button, but continue with a forward motion. Once you've completed your cast, you want to turn your handle till you hear a click. And that sets your line. That way, if you do catch a fish, they're not going to continue to pull line out of your reel. This allows you to then set the hook when a fish bites. And sometimes when you're fishing, it's just as easy as that. Visit the Arizona Game and Fish website at azgfd.gov fishing to get the latest information about fishing in Arizona.